A Soviet space station lost communication with the ground station due to an electrical malfunction while in orbit. Luckily, nobody was aboard the space station known as Salute 7 at the time of the catastrophe. However, it lost control and broke out of its orbit due to a power outage. The most challenging issue in Soviet space history was this one. An unmanageable space station lifted off at a speed of 27,000 kilometers per hour was no less than a time bomb. Every effort to recover control had been fruitless. But then something happened that made the Soviet Union proud. Both nations were preoccupied with demonstrating their might during the U.S.-Soviet Code War. The value of this display of strength exceeded millions of dollars. During the same code of battle, both nations created innovations that we still use today, including the Internet, jet planes, and global positioning satellites, or GPS. In a move that was previously unimaginable to man, actions were taken simultaneously to degrade each other in the eyes of the outside world. And the space competition comes first in this regard. The two nations wanted to send more space missions because they had gotten so near to one another. In 1970, both nations deployed many space stations to undertake research on numerous objects in orbit during the same period. The U.S. space station program was called Skylab, whereas the Soviet space stations were called Salute. These were single-stage, tiny space stations launched simultaneously. They were returned to Earth after conducting a brief investigation in space. The challenge now was to see who could send astronauts to the space station and keep them there for the longest. Rather, he gave his space group the name Cosmonauts. Beyond these small space stations, the Soviet Union sought retribution against the United States in the 1980s, opted to construct a full-scale Mir space station. The development of it was greatly delayed, and at that moment, their space station, Salute 6. His mission and travel around was complete. The Salyut 7 space station had already been launched by the Soviets when they launched the Mir space station. Because they desired to stay in the room throughout this period, front and rear docking ports were the Salute 7's standout feature. An additional space sheep may use these docking pods to attach to them while in orbit. This made it possible to rotate the crew and supply supplies simultaneously. Salyut 7 was launched by a proton rocket in April of 1982. Crow was also given a mission on the 13th, during which he set a new world record by traveling for 201 days. Their mission was to fire a 28-kilogram radio satellite via the garbage air loop of the space station. It was the first satellite to be launched from a human spacecraft. Salute 7's first year was successful, but problems started to appear one after another after that. Osmonauts discovered there was no fuel tank pressure on September 9, 1983. This was by no means normal, as zero pressure indicates that the tank is empty. The location of the fuel leak was discovered outside the space station after looking through the portal. Let me explain. Because there is no air pressure in orbit, everything will be drawn out of the space station if there is a hole the size of a needle. And so it was with the Salute 7's gasoline tank. It was crucial to plug this hole as soon as possible to prevent more harm. But sadly, Cosmonauts was missing some necessary equipment. Only the tools that were intended to dock with Salute 7 were sent to the space station using a second spacecraft launch. It also carried the required tools and an additional crew. It is thought that this repair represents one of the most intricate projects of that era, which required chasmnauts to exit the space station and perform welding. The fuel tank cap was eventually closed with the aid of special dowels and dowel welding. Salute 7's repair was quite remarkable. However, the impending challenge would cause his Sikh breath to become problematic. When the cosmonauts from Salyut 7 returned to Earth in 1984 via Soyuz spacecraft, the space station was placed in autopilot mode. This meant that the Soviet ground staff was now in charge of remotely monitoring the space station. A few months after the cosmonauts' landing, on February 11, 1985, Salyut 7 abruptly lost touch with the ground station crew. Examining the fault logs showed that there had been an electrical spike of some kind inside the orbiting Salute 7. Ground team made contact again by turning on a backup communication system. Now that communication with Salute 7 has resumed, another electrical spike happens not too long after. Now there is no communication with the space station at all. Furthermore, it strayed off its orbit, posing a threat to the Soviet Union at the time. At 16 meters, the space station was completely silent and out of control without a crew. When this news reached the USA, there was no better opportunity for him. 
Yu wanted to capture the Salute 7 with the help of his cargo bay shuttle, bring it back to Ard, and then become a hero in the eyes of the world. The Soviet Union could have accomplished this, but sadly, they were working on their Buran shuttle at the time, making it impossible for them to seize the Salute 7. The Soviet Union chose to send a team of two cosmonauts to fix it, since, in the eyes of the world, they were utterly powerless in this situation. If the space station was operational, this work would be rather simple, because other spacecrafts are automatically connected by their docking mechanism. The goal of the Soviet Union was to reach 27,000 Kiyonadar Kimidor H. Manoli Drake will be the first space station in orbit. The space station must then manually dock by aligning with it after that. Furthermore, the dispatched party may die as a result of even a minor error made throughout this entire process. But there was nothing left to do. To save Salyut 7, the Soyuz spacecraft was launched on June 6, 1985. Additionally, a laser rangefinder was added, enabling them to ascertain the Silhouette 7's range. Additionally, cosmonauts brought night vision goggles, due to the possibility that manual docking will need to be done in total darkness. Eventually, two days into their orbit, cosmonauts approached Salute 7. Since the spacecraft's solar panels are connected to electrical actuators that maintain the panel's constant orientation toward the sun, their initial observation was that the solar panels were meshing, which indicated that the electrical system had entirely failed. Grieve first positioned itself about the Silhouette 7 with the aid of a laser rangefinder. They then gradually approached the space station by synchronizing its rotation with your spacecrafts. He succeeded in manually docking the Soyuz using Salute 7. The moment had come that everyone had been waiting since nobody knew why the Salute seam had closed or what kind of danger could be present there. As soon as they opened the Salute sea hatch after docking, a bitter cold breeze hit them. Since Salute 7's power had been off for a while, the heating system had also been switched off. Inside, everything was frozen and absolutely black. A temperature below 150 degrees Celsius, for which the Silhouette 7's interior was not intended. The three parted the hedges and entered Silhouette 7 after the two chasm knots changed into warm clothing. Moreover, they possessed air quality monitors that revealed elevated levels of carbon monoxide, indicating the presence of a fire. The chasm knots were both having difficulty breathing. Only one cosmonaut would be inside Silhouette 7 at a time because Salute 7's circulation system was malfunctioning and the carbon dioxide in their breath was making the toxin inside even more lethal. For both groups, there was an extreme lack of supplies. They had only 8 days of food and water. They only had provisions for a maximum of 12 days, if they were to use any at all. However, it can take more than 12 days to identify and address the Salute 7's issue. It turned out that a single malfunctioning sensor was the reason the entire space station had shut down when troubleshooting the electrical system. The purpose of this sensor is to prevent overcharging of the batteries. It wasn't letting the batteries charge when it broke. And last, the system shut down when the batteries were totally depleted. After altering the solar panel's orientation and replacing the sensor, amazingly, the Salute 7 began to breathe once more. And for the following year, it stayed a component of the mission. The Soviet Union also launched Mir, its largest space station during this same period. Following that, Salute 7 was no longer necessary, but it was nevertheless chosen to maintain him in Orat. Additionally, Mir visited Salyut 7 in a spacecraft, setting a new record for virus transfers from station to station. Amazingly, the Salute 7 started to breathe again. For the following year, it remained a component of the mission. The Soviets wanted to put Salyut 7 further into space. For this, he was sent to higher and but, 475 kilometers away. But after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, Salute 7 was shelved due to funding issues and other issues. And he kept reducing his orbit until one day, he had an uncontrolled re-entry into the atmosphere. And Saud crumbled to pieces over America. Thus ended the Soviet Union's last Salyut space station. Thank you for joining us, and see you in the next video.